Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Well, it is Monday night, it is nine o'clock, it is Tin Your Tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and the ever capable mod master that is Mark. That was a little bit tense to say the least this week. Um, if anything could go wrong, I think everything did just prior to uh, to the show there. I lost absolutely everything. Um, but the uh, the ferries came down the line and, and they fixed pretty much most of it. It was a touch and go as, as we say. Um, what have we got lined up for you this week? Um, I'm sure most of you were gripped last week with uh, with Mark and his uh, his wood um, that he's doing the uh, the, the vamo with. Um, I'm just let me calming down ever so slightly. Um, I uh, have got to grips, and I know I showed you um, showed you one of these last week, which was the little uh, sort of minting with the endy bit that we did. Well. I had a play of one of those, and uh, I thought it was going to be a uh, an easy little mod. Um, however, it turned out to be a complete and up a pig, basically. I thought I was going to sort of nail it in a week. Um, unfortunately, it ended up uh, that it's going to run over two. And apologies for that, but the, the, there's lots of bits and pieces to it, and, and lots of sort of food for thought, and lots of mod planning, um, which I'm sure. Uh, will aid some of you guys that watch us. Um, getting lots of nice messages coming in from you guys. Um, lots of support, it is really appreciated. Um, me and Mark do try hard to bring you uh, to bring you what we do. Um, and as always, you know, any suggestions, anything like that, um, keep them coming in. Um, somebody sent me a really nice bit on on the uh, on the lathe and and how to set um, set it up with speeds is that any other which I actually put to use this week. Now I didn't mention it in the video, but I most certainly put it to use, and the the results uh, you know on on the back of that were very very good. Um, again, last week I picked up in 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 our chat that uh, somebody said have a go at some brass, um, which I've I've put uh, an order in uh, for some. Um, without further ado, I'm going to crack on with, with our first little section of videos and uh, I'll see you back very shortly after these. Right, we're back for a, another week and uh, and this week I'm going to be looking at uh, at this tin. Now, now last week I had um, I had this one I think we were, we were talking about when, when we were doing uh, a little bit on the lathe. Um, decided to do this. A few people have uh, sent me a message and said they would like to see it, so we will do it. Now, this isn't like our our normal tin um, that, that we use. Um, we would, you know, the, the normal sort of thing we use is something like the uh, the Altoid tin, um, and just recently I've found uh, these ones, which are ever so slightly larger than the Altoid tin, um, and these are ball brand tobacco tin. This is one that I've made. I've made a few of these this weekend. Um, I'll show you while we're here. It'd be rude not to. Um, now these, I've managed to get the the board in that Mark uh, was playing with. Um, Customised a little twin 18 350 holder. And the great thing I think about these boards is is you hit your button and you got your uh, you got your load voltage. Let me bring it out there. So you got your load voltage, and there's a little button down on the board there, and you press that, and it shows you your battery voltage. But lots of things we can do with the tins. Um, these ones. Why are they different? They're different in in terms of of working space. So when we pop open the end, you can see there's not much down in there to work with. Um, and it's very very tight to, to get down in there. Uh, whereas this type, obviously, you you got a hell of a lot of room to work in. So how we're going to tackle this? Part of this is, is going to be looking at how we would uh, how we would plan out our our mod. And I'll put these two to one side. I, I plan on working on this one today. Um, quite like the look of that one. But a couple of things we've got to take into consideration. This has got a recess on the end here. Now, effectively, what I'm thinking is I will mount a battery spring for the negative terminal on this tin uh, and use the, uh, if, if you like, the, the continuity through the body of the tin to, to carry the negative voltage up to the atomizer connection. Um, I'm going to be mounting a, uh, a battery in here. Um, with a positive pin running straight through to the to the pos on on the ATI connection. So 
first of all we're looking at this end here now I know we could uh, obviously I think what I'm going to potentially do is, is have to backfill this with epoxy um, now I don't know whether I'm going to do that before I drill it or after I drill it um, the reason I say it's going to be quite a thin layer and, and drilling through that into the tin may well shatter the epoxy so I may well put the ATI connection in first and seat it flush with the top of this and then backfill afterwards I don't know um, what am I going to use? Am I going to use a, uh, a standard IT connection um, or are we going to use a, an Ego IT connection? As you can see, the Ego IT connection would quite happily sit down in there. However, I just want to use a normal one. Most of my stuff is, is flush fitting, so uh, I can get this. If I get this flush to the, uh, to the tin lid um, and, and epoxy that back on, most of my stuff is, is going to sit flush on there. Next choice is, is going to be what sort of switch do we use. Um, now obviously a variety of switches. Um, we've got our what we call the horn switch. Um, nice firm action on these. Um, quite like that one. We've got our big black button switch. Now obviously the problem with this is, is that it's going to be very very close. Um, for the pins. We could shave back the pins but to avoid any shorting issues that one can go to one side. Um, our flat switch as you can see again is literally going to be you know on the verge of, of shorting on the casing um, which we don't want. Um, again these sort of things I could probably get one of those in on the side down there but again tiny one. Tiny one would probably work very very well. Um, Actually, that yeah, might not be a bad idea. We could get he mounted up down there on the side. That's a possibility. Or I've got my uh, my big one, um, which again is a, a, nice, a good firm action. Uh, the one thing I won't use is is these, um, unless I've, I'm using something like this with a with a MOSFET circuit. Um, purely because these these are just not rated up to the job these little tactile switches it'll probably work okay for a little while but but give it a couple of weeks couple of months and and they're just gonna gonna fail I think um, that's a no get that one to one side so we got to look at planning this out first I'm gonna have to drill a hole in in the top here for our Eti. Um roughly centralize that up um, I need to look at because in here uh, this is this is going to be too tight for an 18650. That just ain't going in there. I mean, with with a bit of sort of bending and that, it might. But you want ease of, of access for your batteries. So what we've we got left, we've got the 18500. Now the 18500 is going to sit down in there perfectly. But as you can see, it disappears halfway down the tube and uh, is going to rattle around like a good one. So we need to think of, of something that we can do to, uh, to, if you like, give us a battery um, holder. Uh, either sat centrally in there and our spring goes on here. So pause end down and, uh, and a spring mounted on there that will collapse down, snap in place and make a neg contact. How are we going to look at doing that? I've been looking at um, a, this is the, if you like, the a torch from the pound shop. Um, now I've used these tubes before to, to make mods. What I think I'm going to look at doing is, is potentially cutting one of these back to the, to the length of, uh, of an 18500. Um, potentially making uh, a cap on one end with our epoxy putty and seating a positive terminal in the putty on this mod. Um, which sounds easier than I think it's going to be um, but the other problem I've got is this is not going to fit in here because this effectively is, is the same size as, a, as an 18650 battery just a little bit smaller I've got a silver one of these and what I intend to do is yes the lathe's coming pop this in the lathe and probably see because it's quite a, a reasonable thickness on the body here I reckon I can shave enough off that so I'll be able to get a, a tube down inside there and use that as my, my battery holder. What I'm going to do is, is pop away, um, have a look at how we're going to do all this up. I'll come back and, uh, and we'll start drilling some holes and, and see where we go. Talk to you in two. So 
So well then, the first job I want to get done today is I need to remove this positive pin that sticks out the bottom. Well, I don't need to, I want to remove it. Just to give me a bit more room to work with whilst I'm inserting it into the case. So, with that in my end, tin up the sold. Solder the tin up. Try it. Solder the tip up with some solder. Just add a bit of heat to it. And if I'm lucky, this will come out. And if I'm not lucky, it won't. There we go. That's the pin. Actually, it's not actually a pin. Uh, I'm sure there it's actually two bits that go over the other side of the board. I shall keep that. That might come in handy at some point in the future. So, knock the solder line off for now. I won't need that for a while. So, as you can see, there's the top and bottom, and I'm assuming well, you only need one, but I will have to check that later on. So, if not, I'll have to put a little bit of wire between the two contacts, but we shall see. So here we have our three pieces of wood. As you can see, I've squared off the ends to make the battery holder fit a bit better. And speaking of which, here is the battery holder. Now I've got a battery in here because one very important thing I've learned in the past, if you're sizing up for the battery holder, you need a battery in it. Because the slight differences in height can throw everything off when you come to put everything together at the end. So the battery holder will fit at the bottom end here. Get this wire out of the way. I've also took the precaution of making sure that the battery, hold, the battery is all the way down towards the spring so it's not contacting the positive, so there's no danger of shorting out the wire whilst you're working. Because that really wouldn't be good. So, I'll pop the top section on. As you can see, that fits in there nicely. And there's more than enough room for that to go in. And hold up nice and square. So that's that. And the other thing I need to check is for this. Uh, move the wires out of the way. Of our board. It's going to sit in there pretty much like so. I think that's where it's going to go there. So, with a pencil. I'm going to try and mark just slightly where it's going to be. important on the top of the board. So now I now know everything's going to fit. So the next job is I need to make some holes in this for display and switches and such. So to help me with that I have cut out a template a piece of paper by the right size. And what I need to do is just give myself an idea of where everything is. So just with the edge of the pencil over it. This 
This was so much easier when I practiced it. There's an outline for that. Two smaller switches. And there's your bigger switch. So now I've got something to work with there. And what I'll be doing is popping that down in there up to the mark that I made. And I'll have to mark through on the other side of the paper where everything is. And then um, it's time to cut out some holes. I can say. Okay, so I'm back and I've, I've been looking at a, a couple of potential problems. Um, normally when I, when I drill, he's choking, when I, when I drill out for my, um, excuse me one second. Oh, that's better. I'm trying to rush because the FA Cup's on today. Um, I'm going to drill dead centre here, which is in the problem because the drill bit can run straight through here. Obviously, when I'm going to be drilling in this, the, the back bit here for, for the switch, normally I would use the, uh, if you like, the step drill bits. Obviously, you can see the problem here. To get down to my switch depth, even using my, uh, my monster bit, it's not going to go down quick enough. But it doesn't step quick enough to hit the back of that tin, I don't think. Let me just grab it. Now, I've got to get down to a certain depth for this. I've decided I'm using the horn switch. I mean, I've, I've got to get down to, to round about sort of here on the step for that to go in. Now, as you can see, that ain't working. So, I'm going to have to try and step up the drill bits uh, to go through. I've got to work out the depth of, of where I want the switch, which possibly means I'm going to have to chop down the ATI connection. Let me, uh, in order to, to gauge that, I need to uh, to drill out from Yeti. Let me just do that. I'm going to start off with a very, very, very small bit, and I'm just going to try and centre that up in there. Obviously, when you're drilling, carefully with your hands. Nice, nice sharp bit. And there's me hole in there for me uh, for me Yeti. It got through damn so easier than I thought it would. Um, when you're drilling for Yeti. 9mm drill bit will take you right down to the correct depth and I'm just using our step drill bit to uh, ease in there and uh, take that out to the, the correct size. Now as I said before with these step drill bits they do cut very 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 quickly uh, once, once they get going so just ease on the power take it one notch deeper but it doesn't take much for these to pop through just like that and then that should sit in there ever so nicely but what I'm gonna have to do is you know it doesn't matter how hard you you try um, these things do sort of pop through I'm gonna use this I don't know, I'm gonna use this tin I might use a green one which means I've just drilled totally the wrong tin but there you go so I can't even get my hand back down in there to push this metal up. Obviously be careful of, of filings. Before you put any pressure on, have a little fill round. There are some little noggins that will stick in your hand. But realistically, if I was using... I've got my hand stuck in there. If I was using this tin, that'd be great. That pop down in there and you can see that that's nice and tight. I haven't got a centre pin in this one and there's a very good reason for that. Um, I'm running very, very short on atomizer connections and I've got to buy some, but I am skinned. Um, there we go. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this, I'll pop back, I'll drill the correct tin, 
which has still got mints in, so I need to empty the mints out. Um, I'm going to be using, I want the green one. Definitely want to be using the green one on this. Um, it's one for me. So let me pop away. Let me uh, drill the green one. I'll come back. And there we go, our first little section of videos over and done. It all goes so quick and, and I'm now calm, I'm relaxed, uh, we had a manic start to the show. Uh, let me put some ads on and I'll pop back very, very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. go we are back in the room now I've, I've been monitoring the the chat while we're going through that and and just obviously for the purpose of people that are watching this on on the replay um, the question was asked what is that bit that was uh, was used to, uh, to to drill the atomizer connection and that is actually uh, what they call a step drill bit um, so effectively it, it goes down from a size to a size and normally they come in in a set of three I think you can pick them up for about 20 25 quid a set for a, for a cheaper set um, on eBay or CPC or I don't even have map into them but they, they come you can get them all over the place um, and depending on what you're going to drill they work well on metal plastic everything um, and I've just seen in, in the chat as well I mean you don't need all the sort of stuff that we have here um, you know to do the modding you, you can do it with very very limited resources and Brian Watts in, in who's in our chat right now has, has said that he made his first box mob with a pair of scissors and a paper clip or something like that but you don't necessarily need every single tool you know you will have um, stuff lying around that you can you can mod and you can make with there's no need to go out and buy specialist equipment um, Obviously, as if you get into modding and and the more that you go along, um, you know you find things that will work and and you, you add to your tool collection. But there's no need to rush out and buy sort of fifty hundred pounds worth of tools just to make a box mod. Um, it'd be pointless. Use what you got lying around. Um, you know, be a bit uh, play. Have a play. That's all we say. And if you need any help with it, all the guys here I'm sure would be happy to help you. Uh, let's pop on with our next little section of videos and, and Mark is continuing with the wood. So I've added a layer of insulate and masking tape to the base so I've got something to mark on and I've put a few holes through this and added a bit of pencil to the back of this so hopefully it'll trace through. So if everything's in the right place should be a matter. I'll just marking through the centers of the holes, tracing over the lines. And 
I think so. I now have the display marked out and the three hole points. I just need to go over this slightly so I can see it better. scrap wood underneath and with my small drill bit I'm just going to start with some pilot holes Where did the space come out? switches I need a three millimeter hole for each of these and that's going to be approximately nine millimeters so I'm going to start off with a three millimeter drill bit to get these bigger switch there's a very small tolerance of what I can use because for some reason the lip for the button is rather small shall we say and bear with me for one second I'll find the right drill bit there we go I use my regular step drill bit for this millimeters as usual is eight point something is eleven thirty seconds. So that is pretty close to what I want. And I can just adjust the hole to make it slightly bigger when I'm done. So pre-marked with tape as usual. Let me just get to work. Be very careful with this not to rip the wood. So just very slowly.
incredibly careful because the wood is so thin it would be so easy to break it off and crack the wood and that would be a complete disaster there you have the holes required hopefully they're in the right place next I'm going to need to cut out this and I'll probably do that with a standing knife I think and I'll back shortly when I clean up right well I've drilled my uh, my green tin um, and what I've done, uh, I took the liberty while drilling that one, you can probably see the hole through the back. I've just knocked uh, an hole in the back there for the switch. Now, effectively, because I couldn't get my through there, um, what I've done is, is just stepped it up. So I've, I've gone through a few drill bit sizes to, to step it up to a reasonable size hole. And I've just used a, a, a bit on the Dremel just to uh, to grind that out a little bit. Now I've left it enough that when I put this switch in, um, it sort of bites on on the last turn of, of the uh, of the threading in there, and that's held tight. Now I wanted it to hold tight because when that's in, I know now this is going to sit pretty much on the top of that switch as you can see there it, it's, it's poking out a little bit that means I've got to grind ever such a tiny bit probably this this first rim now I don't know we can sort of show you that but roughly about that first rim on the ATI connection we'll, we'll sit that then down on top of the switch um, and it will give me the, the ability to flush that up top of the tin which is what I wanted to do um, next thing I need to try and work out now I know the, and I've tested this, the position of the switch, I know that my battery will uh, will roughly sit on the top of there. And what I'm going to do is backfill, once I've, it's, it's going to be a bit tricky, I'm going to try and wire this bit up and, and then backfill this with, with either a hot glue or an epoxy. So it's going to be completely and utterly sealed down in the bottom there. Now the reason I'm going to do that, I need that to give me a, uh, a base. Um, because I've got to get a positive pin in there somehow for my ATI, ATI for my battery. So my neg pin is going to be coming off the off the tin here, but I need to get a uh, a pos pin. So what I intend to do is use one of these tubes, knock that back um, widthwise in the lathe, because obviously that isn't going to fit in there. And then once I've got my tube. I intend to use our usual sort of uh, putty that we've got and actually make a, uh, a base on this of putty with the centre pin in. What that will enable me to do is to, to then feed that down roughly where I want it to go, solder my centre pin on the switch, switch up to the atty. Um, neg off me atty is going to come directly off the tin so that shouldn't be an issue at all I'm going to pop away I'm going to set up the lathe um, I won't be doing lots of uh, lots of lathing but I'll show you roughly where where we've got to and uh, and how that's going to work I will pop back in a couple of minutes I'm just going to pop in very quickly uh, in between that video. I've got something lined up here because obviously we're talking about tins and drilling this and the other. We had a little bit of fun uh, a little while ago and uh, we were talking about uh, drilling tins and this may help uh, if you like the challenge chat. Uh, so Rat Finks, uh, this one is, is going out to you. Uh, I'm going to pop straight into the ads after this um, and sad features in this video if only vocally. Right. So uh, we're back again for the second part of our video and um, just to let you know I am in currently a chat room and one of those people in there is Sav um, who was for some reason really worried about what we we're going to do. I told her we were going to do a little video about drilling um, and my chocolate penguin and oh, no, I, no, 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 no. I don't know why she was worried. Um, just for Sav and the viewers at home, this is my chocolate penguin. <laughs> it is a tin. Would you guys like to say hello to the people on the video? Hello, people. See, you can't see Sav, this is bizarre. Um, 
we said we were gonna we we're gonna talk about doing a little bit of drilling and somebody had problems uh, drilling a tin and they kept mullering it and wrecking their hole. For some reason bits and a chocolate penguin come to mind. So I'm gonna show you obviously the way that I do this is is he's stuttering. He always does this and, and then he has to find something to say afterwards. Um, I'm just gonna put a small drill bit in first and I've got one of these drills that uses a hand tighten chuck um, simply by tightening that down with your hand is there. First thing you need to do on your tin is find out where you would like your hole. Now with a chocolate penguin that is always advisable. Um, depending on where you want the switch they're uncontrollable. I don't know what. We're talking about tins guys. <laughs> so, yes. What we want to do is, I'm going to put a switch on one side and a, uh, an atty on the other. Um, when you're drilling a tin, you've got to be very careful when you're going through. Um, Sav? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can hear Sav, but trust me, she is there. Um, I what are your experiences with drills, Sav? Slim to none. I once put a curtain rail up, and that's it. <laughs> it I nearly fell out the window. I won't be falling out of a window doing this, hopefully. <laughs> I'll try. But what we're doing, we're, we're drilling metal. So slow speed is good. Right. So I'm going to guesstimate this and I'm going to go in round about there. And what I'm doing, I'm using my thumb to guide this. I know what people will be saying in chat, they want to see blood. <laughs> I will try. <laughs> but start off slowly with a tin when you drill in a tin um, the the bit can slip all over the place so to start with you've got to apply a little bit of pressure building up slowly you find that if you build up slowly towards the end you can give it a final burst and you're actually through <laughs> and there we go. Think Sabs. <laughs> I apologize. She's apologizing. So as you can see, I've got, now got a hole in my penguin. You will get a bit of spillage out the back. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, no. It, sorry. I'll, I'll put that another way. When you uh, when you pop this drill bit through, you can get like little shards come out the back. So um, just be careful you don't cut yourself on those. What I'm going to do now is once I've got my uh, initial hole in, I'm going to up the um, the ante as they say, and try and ream it out a bit bigger. So I'm just going up to a slightly bit bigger drill bit, and I'm just. Easing that in very slowly. Be careful not to push too hard because this is where you can get a blow out of the back. And just when you get to the end where you think it's going to give, you need to ease off just ever so slightly. There we go. Feels rather good when it finally goes through. So now what I'm going to do is give it the big boy. The daddy of all drill bits. And for an atomizer connection you do need a 9mm drill bit. The, the bits that I'm using are round and long. Um, other than that, I don't know, they come out of a pack. Um, if you want to find out specifically what drill bits they are, I'm sure I can try and read the small print as it goes round, but don't hold your hopes. Bigger one going in, so always get, before you before you do this, you need to make sure whatever you're drilling, especially when you're going for the big boy, you make sure you've got a firm grip, 
what you don't want to do when you're trying to ram something in that hole is slip and put it in your hand. Um, so get a good grip, try and pin it down on the bench as much as you can and then just ease the big one in. Again, before it pops through, just ease off ever so slightly. And there we go. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go. That video was filmed a long, long, long time ago, and uh, I thought it'd be rather apt, uh, seeing as we're working on tins this week. I'm going to crack on very, very quickly uh, because we are running very, very short time. I'm consciously looking at this. I managed to uh, get a tube and stick it in the lathe, and uh, here we are. <laughs> on the bench and you can see this was uh, effectively it was a silver version of uh, of this torch and all we've done on the lathe and it's a good job this was quite quite hefty um, or, or quite a nice thick aluminium because we've literally shaved uh, shaved a section of, of that back um, literally only to make it fit now the reason I, I want to have a a tube in here, a battery tube. I don't want it rattling around like Gooden in there. Uh, this is going to give a nice solid um, battery holder. Obviously it wouldn't go in as it was like that. Shave back. That's a nice snug fit for a battery tube in there. And the way that's going to work, obviously we're going to have our, our switch. Let me just get that last little bit of bite. Yeah, there you go. We're going to have our switch in there, we've got our ATSI connection that we, we still need to shave back a little bit of in there. Um, now our battery tube, let me pop out, it's too much in one little space. So battery, uh, our switch in there, we've got our ATSI that's going to be seated in the top. Down in the tin there you can see that we've got our switch in that that we're going to epoxy and backfill up to. And our battery tube essentially is, is potentially going to sit down in there. Now that's as far as it goes on the switch. So if we just mark that off with my fingers and bring in a 14500 battery, 
you can see I've easily got the depth and some to play with. Now I've got to allow for room for a, a spring to be mounted uh, on this board to make the contact. Um, and also I've got to work out a way of putting a, uh, a positive pin um, on this end. A positive pin that is completely insulated against the, uh, the outer section here um, because you know, obviously this is going to be our, um, our neg pin is, is going to come down on the top. I need to, to have a think about how we're going to do that. Um, I'll pop away, we'll have a look. What I need to do is, is cut down this tube essentially to, uh, to battery size. I'm just going to do that on, on the, uh, as we showed you last week, with, with our little cutting disc on, on the Dremel. Um, so just literally round it off and file it down flat. doesn't have to be flat. As long as I can get a battery down in there and make your contact, happy days. I'll pop back in two and, uh, and see where we got to. Now, now at this point, before I cut out the hole for the display, there is one job I must do before I forget about it, and that is the holes for the magnets. Now, the most important thing is that the magnet on the main unit and the lid match up exactly, so that it holds everything square when it's put together. So, what I'm going to do is drill a pilot hole through the two pieces of wood all the way through this piece and into the lid so that I've got to mark exactly where the centre of the hole is going to go so I've clamped it together in exactly the position it needs to be and I just need to mark out where the magnets are going to go I need them to be away from all of the edges as much as possible because if I'm going to do any shaping or anything like that, sanding down with the wood I don't want them to come out of the hole. So just roughly mark out with a pencil where they're going to go. And the same on the other end. Now these ones I need to be aware, I've got to leave room for the atomizer connector to be put through. So I'm slightly off to one side. Roughly then marked out. So now I have taken my small drill bit, I'm going to use for the pilot holes, and I've marked it out to the depth I need to go all the way through this and just into the other wood. So these roughly in the centre. And 
have got this right, should now have matching holes on the unit. And indeed I have. I'll pretend that you can actually see it. So there's four holes on each. I know if I drill out the bits for where the magnets are going to go, that will be the centre of each hole and they should all match up when they're put together. Now it's important to do that bit now because at some point in the near future I will be gluing these two bits together and once I've done that there's no way to drill the hole through from one to the other. And I may well drill through these holes into this part because I am toying with the idea of adding some metal posts to these four corners to add extra strength to the wood. It's not necessary but I might do it anyway. We'll see how we go. But for now, it's going to be back to this. So I'll get rid of the scrap wood. And I need this to start off with at the very least. Why not? I need a line on here before I do anything else. So let's see what I'm working to. Mostly I'm doing these lines so that if anything breaks away it's got a point to break along so there's less risk of damaging the rest of the wood. a bit closer to myself because I can't quite see very well and I don't want to make a mistake but it should all be done next time when you see me okay while I've been away and I know this may look like it's a lot of work on a little din um, effectively I've got a 510 connector here yep and what I've done is chop that down and I've run a bead of solder around the outside of that. I've taken out the um, center pin purely because I knew this was going to be under a, a great deal of heat and I didn't want anything happening with the uh, with the center grommet. Now I'm just going to attach that to, to an old atomizer and the reason I put that bead of solder around there um, is because I, I want to earth or, or get continuity through the body of this mod without running uh, additional wires on the end here. So that, and obviously our rough cut on the top, I'm going to have to effectively sort of screw pretty much that in, and it's going to grip on the solder on the outsides. Now that allows me to, to obviously position up the height that I need on my atty, and roughly about there. So it gives me a, a good gauge to, to get a, a perfect height on it, a good position um, and uh, and then I can, when I sort of fill that back in there um, with, a, with a little bit of a epoxy just to hold that in place, um, I know that's going to be solid. Now with these tins they do have a coating on and to carry the, uh, the wee, to carry the, the uh, 
the currents through through the, the body of the mod is another reason why I put this on. So it forms a good seal with, with the tin. Um, now with these tins, if you're going to solder anything on them, you do need to scratch back. There is a, a, a slight coating on there. And if I, I bring in the, um, the bipometer and, and touch on here, you can see I've got continuity across the lid. And you see if I touch there, I don't. Unless I scratch a little, and then I will have. If I touch this on the end of the atty, I've got continuity, which means I've got a a circuit running up here, and and that additional little bit of solder is helping to ground that atomizer connection against the the body of the mod. So I I shouldn't have a need for any additional wires. Uh, running from, from the outer case um, down to our battery holder because aluminium is an absolute pig to solder to and I don't want to be messing with that. All I want to take off, off here is as a positive contact. So we have the makings of our mod. Now with that cut back you can see I have no interruption. I'll be able to drop the switch straight in there um, and uh, let me tube down there like so get a positive contact in happy days spring on the back end and jobs are good um, a lot more work to do on this I thought this was going to be a relatively quick and simple tin mod but because of, of the way it's constructed is is, is um, I'm sure there are people out there saying I could have had that done in five minutes um, but first time I played with one and you know I do it live or not live but I, I record as I go I, I don't edit this stuff down I literally do it as I'm playing with it and hopefully the thought process involved in that as well um, comes across now you can't get the bloody thing out but that's what I intend to do now because I've scored that in doing it when I actually do it for final I'm gonna run the, the iron round there again um, and get that fixed in. I'll probably get this fixed in first with a, with a little sort of bit of epoxy and then what I'm going to have to do is pre-wire pre my switch. So I'll pre-wire my switch going from here up to the pos pin when I put one in um, and then I'll, I'll leave a bit of trailing cable seat this home so I've got my neg connection um, I'll have a trailing wire coming off here for the pos pin up to, to where I need to connect to here that should all feed back down inside because I'm going to backfill all of this with with a uh, hot glue I think to to keep this centralized again I don't know I'm making it up I'm playing as we're going um, this one I didn't think it was going to be a two week job um, but it is looking like it is going to be if you fancy uh, sort of following this through and having a look at where we're going um, you don't necessarily need to to you know have a lathe and, and a, the torch from the pound shop you, you can potentially use um, an offcut of, of some uh, plastic piping plumbing tubing anything that will take an 18 you know 18500 battery I know some people will say you could have shoved a holder down in there um, I'm thinking of ease of ease of use ease of changing the battery and for me popping it up dropping it out popping another one in snapping the top down is a hell of a lot easier than popping that pulling out a battery connector making sure the wires don't tangle popping it all back in and then popping it up it just it just seems a nicer way of doing it um, he says I'm sure there will be things <laughs> contradicting what I'm saying but I've got a few of these to play with um, intend to intend to ever ever go at a few um, I'm gonna pop back into the studio uh, and I will see you or we'll be catching up with this one um, next week. I don't think I'll be filming anymore. If I do, uh, if I look at the, the recordings and, and think, oh good, that's a bit short of time, um, I may well pop back in a bit, but I doubt it very much. I think I've pretty much uh, nailed the time on this one. I will uh, see you back in the studio and we'll be finishing this next week. 
And with all that said, we are back in the studio and it is time to wrap it up rather rather rapidly. Um, we've, we've overrun ever so slightly tonight. Thank you very, very much for watching, guys. Don't forget to tune in all this week on VTTV. Lots of good stuff coming up. From me and Mark, it's good night and we'll catch you next week. Tip with Gary Dibley.